TV. This is our SSC Electricity Union Fire Award Show. And today I'm joined by Greg Malloy, aka Killian M2 on YouTube and Twitter, uh, Bohemians fan, and obviously Gary Parsons from Tales of the East End podcast, Sean McCorver's podcast, and Kieran McCorver, who is going to be with us going forward. And we'll be hosting shows and coming to games and interviewing fans. And you may have seen the interview with Shane Supple last night at the at Daily Month. But uh, we'll kick things off with Monday's games. Sean McGrover's 2, Derry City nil. I was at the game myself, but what were your thoughts on the game? This yeah. is take 2, by the way, because the microphone wasn't plugged in. So. Uh, I mentioned in the bar, you snared me in the bar. So, uh, <laughs> actually, but tell me what you think of the bar for us. Tell me what you think of facilities. I think the facilities are fantastic. I mean, obviously last season we didn't get much, much time to go up there for whatever reason. But, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I, a lot of people that are fans of the show come, come up and... You know, very welcome and, and enjoying the nice. I'm mean, just welcome and nice. Whereas I didn't think I was going to get that because it covered a bit of bows. Whereas it tried to be neutral with everything, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was good. So I obviously have a lot. Of, I'm obviously south side, so I obviously have a lot of friends that go up to the games and stuff like that. So I said that have a sneaky point. Go out watch the match. It was, it was good. Yeah, yeah. But the only problem I would have is you can bring the the point out to watch the match. They're better. working on that. The, no, that's 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 a legal thing. But uh, we're working on something. So to watch this space. But as regards to the game, 2-0, um, opening at the south stand, the Ultras have moved into Block X and it's pretty much where our, our hardcore are going to be from there on in. And um, the atmosphere was rocking and to be honest, I haven't felt like that at a game in a while. There was just such a good um, feeling around the ground. Buzz. And, oh, and what? Oh, oh yeah, buzz, we had yeah. super buzz around the ground and everyone, like, I mean, the, the attendance, we all worked pretty hard and getting people in the door and just letting people know about it. And, like, we said in take one, which you'll never hear. Um, we were speaking about how, club, how clubs are just so independent and they all do their own thing. They're just totally apart from the FAO. I mean, it's it's crazy. So we worked hard in getting bodies in the door. And uh, I mean, on the game itself, it's a game we would have drawn last year, I reckon. Um, we wouldn't have been able to grind it out, but we did. We got that, that extra bit of quality with, with, uh, with Dylan Watts. I mean, he struck the great finish. Ah, super finish. I mean, to strike the ball like that, coming at you at pace and to keep it down and to bury it was it's a fantastic skill. And even when it comes down to like the penalty, like like I said, McEnef, he's at their nail his corners to the to, to the mass chair. I think the, the Derry affiliation is officially gone after that. Yeah, well, I think I think what what he wants to do is make himself you know favorite of fans now. I mean, this is what playing yeah, for. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. And the whole see the whole the old topic of not celebrating for your new club for your old club i think that i think that's bullshit to be honest because if you don't don't go crazy celebrating like drennan unless you have a problem with them but if you're you're just showing disrespect to your new club if you don't celebrate yeah. so celebrate with your own fans and, and and do that that's what he did and uh i mean we were delighted with him but it's not like you ran down to the Derby city end it's like yeah. gone yeah you know in their, in their face they, so they were all, yeah, we were happy enough Definitely happy enough with that. Like I said, we, we would probably have drawn that game last year and uh, we were happy enough with the performance. A bit scrappy, but uh, Lee Ray's my man the match for that. Yeah, I didn't think that Derry looked like troubling at any point during the game. As a, we <laughs> said in take one, that, you know, there was a couple of high balls came in and, you know, Rovers dealt with them. Yeah, they were, they were trying to clip them around the looks of Sean Kevin and Boyle and put in the strike because he was, made, he was running all night, uh, number nine, I think. I'm not sure what, I can't remember what his name was, but he was he was running all night and trying to get him behind the centre house, but they're not getting behind Lee Grace. He's just gonna have you in his pocket yeah. all day. I was expecting more from Alan Stokes and Barry McNamee, to be honest. Yeah, nobody really stuck out. Like like Barry McNamee didn't have much of a good game. I thought and like I said, we spoke about beforehand, Slogger was excellent in the Yeah, bar. You're a big fan of his. Yeah, yeah. and I thought I, I like wingers, pacey wingers and the uh, guy in the left wing number eleven. Uh he, he he was getting stuck in as well to boil, so I like anybody who's kinda of direct. Other than that, no, they, they didn't show much. Yeah, um, and just kind of from a balls perspective, we went to UCD, got a fanta- yeah. fantastic result. Two brilliant goals, yeah. uh, Mandrew and Dilly Parker. Mandrew's strike was unbelievable. And yeah. It's a shame, as you touched on before, that you had to wait so long to actually get the goals out there so yeah. people can actually see them. I mean, to be honest, I was, I was probably more happy to see Dini getting off the mark because he was bit of a slow start to last season. Mm. I think he was injured to start last season. He was, yeah, but I'd say his fitness wasn't right or whatever. So, I mean, the, the fact that he kind of hit the, hit the ground running. Yeah, he's like, three and three yeah. now. Yeah, three absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the people were tipping on him. He, he, he was a good outside bet at the start of the season to finish up. But I, I see um, Hoban is, is off the mark now anyway, so. 
you need to give him a run. But um, just a great. I mean, it was like a home match out there. Obviously, with the when when, when you go to UCD, it's going to be like a home match anyway. But um, terrific atmosphere. The Bounce fans filled the filled the the, the, the full side of the stand at fifteen hundred. Um, as I was saying, take one. There's I I seen a stat during the week that um, there was there was more people. There was fifty percent of UCD's entire crowd for two thousand and seventeen was there because their, their entire crowd in two thousand and seventeen was just over three thousand or something. So um, so it's terrific and, and it, it, it's it's right across the board. The crowds have been really really good. Um, football was I mean Keith Ward is playing out of his skin. He's playing, playing out of position. Yeah. Playing out of position. He's getting a lot of joy in that left hand side. He is yeah yeah, yeah. and I mean he he's been I think he, he's been one of the top players in the league in the last couple of years and obviously because he's with balls and we're not up there challenging and that he goes a bit unnoticed. But um, on his day, he's 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 as good as him. Key long or key ward? Key ward. Oh, I key long. I probably did. <laughs> Playing out of skin <laughs> from yeah. the sideline. But now, yeah, ward, uh, he has been fantastic. For me, he's a bit inconsistent at times. You, you, you expect him to, to give off a simple pass, and he tries a lot of these kind of Hollywood balls a lot yeah, of the time. Yeah. Maybe he's starting to cut that out of his game. Yeah. Um, Even last night, actually, I noticed that like, he was... He's probably balls man the match last night, but mm. sometimes like he'll beat a defender. Like he was he was excellent out on the left hand side, and his his end product can be quite poor at times. Like yeah. he'll do all the hard work, and then he'll just try a Hollywood ball or, or something yeah. along the lines of that. He could he could have been a, a, a fantastic player, but I mean, sadly his end product is is the problem there. But listen, he's posted so hard a few times. Yeah, now, it's, it's, it's kind of like an Aaron Lennon type. Of yeah. Yeah. I suppose that's what happens though when he's playing in that position. He's that type of player that he's the one that constantly has to take risks. And because he's constantly taking risks, he's the one that's at the end of every play is the person who's either gonna create the chance or lose the ball. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. It's, it's what comes um, with that position, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's constantly being fed the ball as well. Like you see, the many mm-hmm. chances that he's had from that down side, he's constantly getting fed out to him. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's what well, happened. You know, I think that's the difference between a, a good player and a top player. If you, if you know what I mean, is like you look at someone like say Michael Duffy, who has end product, who you know. Cross and goals. Yeah. He adds everything. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm not saying that Long or to Ward. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that Ward is poor or anything. Right. Like yeah. obviously, man match against Rovers, who Rovers do look very very strong, and they, you know, they come to to the game later on. But from Ward's perspective, if he can just do more of the simple thing, I think at times he'll make himself look like a better player. Mm-hmm. He might not be doing Hollywood stuff, but if he's giving simple balls. He might create more more chances for goals in my opinion, but you seem happy enough with him anyway. Oh, I mean, he's, I mean, he's just one of these guys you want in your dressing room anyway. You know, he's a real leader. Yeah. And um. Hey, yeah. Um, but what what's your take on the fact that the goals couldn't be shown? Like, you, obviously, these are two fantastic goals. Yeah, I mean, but I I I mean that's a big bear in mind. I I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. I was even on the the Pat's website and they they had on their YouTube channel premiering in two days the the goals. You know, they're, 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 that was like. From a game on Friday night, not to be able to see them on, on uh, Monday, and particularly when they're two screamers like <coughs> they were in Belfield, they should have been on the internet that night. They should have been gone viral mm. because by the time Monday comes around, there. Well, so pages are shared, and like I, I, I touched on it before, domestic Ireland, it's a fantastic Twitter page. If you don't follow them, I think you should. Yeah. Because they're just all about promoting the league, and there's there's no bias there. But yeah. They were even coming out and saying. I suppose they put the calls out on the on their Twitter, and you could see it was it was from a fan's phone, I think. Yeah. On the sideline, but it did look like a fantastic strike, you know, after Barrett's manager's goal. Yeah, yeah. And then, as you said, um, Denny's goal was quite like something like, you know, Berbatov, where he's, it's coming over and he sticks it back into the corner, which yeah. came from. I mean, I took I took that footage myself just to slow it down because the the um the footage of the goal was very fast. So you yeah, know, yeah. You wouldn't really see it. So I slowed it down myself and I stuck it on Twitter myself. And um, I think it had about 20,000 views that night. So that, and that was even a couple of days after. If mm. I had to put it up on Friday, it probably would have done 60. Yeah, we, we, put up, so, we, we put up a video of Callum O'Dowd's goal yeah. uh, against Norwich the other day. That went 30k. So for yeah, yeah, the yeah. League of Ireland, that's, that's very, very good. Yeah. You know. Um, but that was just from my Twitter. If, if that had to come from the you know the league's Twitter or something like that. Yeah, the FAI. The FAI, somebody with a bigger audience, it would have gone triple that. You know? Yeah, yeah. But that's the way, you know, I, I just, as I said, I, I was saying in take one that the, uh, if I had my way, I'd take the cameras out of the ground altogether until they start paying some money for it, at, least, at the very least. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need them. I think that social media, what you guys are doing in between the stripes and uh, all the other guys, they're, they're giving enough coverage. All we need to do is get the goals out there. That's yeah. the only thing that's missing. Imagine how good this show would be now, why not? Yeah, oh yeah, the game changer, man. I mean, the old, the, the old soccer republic, the old format, the art. 
I generally wouldn't, as a fan of the league, I, I never missed it for the simple reason I was afraid I'd miss something. Now, I probably wouldn't be bothered about the, the half hour version because I've probably seen the goals from people's phones on Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. And it, I think the league are going to allow the goals to be shown now. So there's actually no reason to watch it, you know, yeah. because it's old news by Monday. Yeah, but they don't seem to really care about it. What's your thoughts on it? No, because I was just saying that, um, I remember you making the point that there's no benefit of it being probably on Air Sport or anything like that. Yeah. Do you feel that, like, if it's on Air Sport or T, it almost takes away from the league because if you're if you have air sport you've sky most likely you know what I mean you've got yeah. Premier League and things like that and there's a notable difference in the pace of the game then when you're watching English teams in week yeah. and then you watch whatever the law on the, do you think that takes away because the experience is much more different than last night actually going to the game the pace seems much quicker and that's more more so going to bring fans towards it taking it off air yeah and taking it off RT and things like that I I just I'm just not convinced that yeah. the um the games being shown live is, is, is bringing people through the gates. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what it's for. You know, I'm not sure who the audience is because when these matches are, are, are live on TV, we're all at games. Exactly. We're, yeah. we're not watching, so I'm not sure. You know, who's the who do they want? Who's the audience? And I know the viewing figures are poor. Yeah. So and they were poor for Soccer Republic in the air format. They're going to be very poor. I honestly genuinely think Soccer Republic won't last. I don't even think they'll see the season now because that's a valuable bit of airtime that they have there and if nobody's watching it they'll pull it and the, the biggest I think the biggest thing that draws away from it is the, then the people that they get on for commentary and analysis yeah. they don't seem to make an effort and uh, yeah. they don't well their sport thing in fairness is they, they, they were doing the you know they were staying on, staying on the air for an hour after yeah. the game but they, they were doing a decent job mm-hmm. RT are trying to copy that now with yeah. their live games but they're just too inconsistent I mean, yeah. they, they, they did a game on the first game of the season and then there was a gap there in a couple of weeks so what's the point Like they need some consistency if they're going to have an audience they, they want their audience every week, but you're just dropping in games when they feel like it is. What's what it's hard. often you say is, but I do agree with them. It's half hours, really, because who, who are they trying to bring in and, and entice to games? Because, let's be honest, it, it takes money off the gate as well. Yeah. I mean, if we if we have a game televised, I, I'm not a fan of it at all, because I know some people could be coming, just getting in from work, let's say the game's a quarter, they kick off. Some people will be getting in from work at half six, and they say it's on the telly, they're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm, I'm tired, I'm not getting out. Whereas if it's not the telly, it's oh, I'll make that extra bit of effort and I'll go. It's no benefit at all to us to have games on RT. You know? There's no money involved. It, we're down on gates and they, they honestly don't care. And I think there was a new appointment recently, wasn't there, about RT as regards yeah. to sports? Yeah. It was a staunch guy, man. Yeah. So you're, yeah. immediately, Soccer Republic gets cut in half mm-hmm. and it's 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 a joke, really. I mean, but what's the next step? What do we do? How, how do we distance ourselves? Or, or do I, like a couple of years ago, there was some really good lads involved with SRFC TV. And they used to stream the games live, they used to have live commentary, and then he put the highlights up straight away, and then they got a cease and the sizzler of RTE saying, can't do this anymore. Well, maybe, maybe they would make a return, then, but what I was thinking is. The lads are still there, they still, they still oh, get involved, but they just can't put the footage yeah. up before. Well, no, I think they can't now because there was a thing lifted, but embargo lifted yesterday. But, yesterday. but even as regards to the live stream, I don't think they can oh, get involved. Okay. That. I think that there is links out there, like Scar Live, and there's cameras in most grounds now for betting purposes, but um, other than that, no. There's, I really don't think that it's any benefit to the league mm. or the house on the TV. Would, would, like would. even last night as regards to like, I was standing at Doyle's corner, I was waiting for a friend, give him a ticket, and the place was hopping. I'll be honest, like I yeah. mean, I had a, co- a couple of country lads approach me and they asked me how they got any tickets. A couple of other random guys I've never met before asked yeah. me for tickets. Like it's the, like it, it was the, the place to be, do you know what I mean? Like it seemed yeah. like it was a cool place to be last night, Dublin Derby on a Monday night. That's where that's where it's the, the yeah. place to go is like so. Hopefully it continues on. Like a trade concert or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that now, but the, the the way it was like all the all the work that the clubs are doing individually, it's it's all on their own backs. No one is giving anyone a hand. Like there's no governing body giving clubs a hand and helping them out with these things, getting bodies in the door. It's all foot soldiers on the ground mm. and, and people putting the thing, the thing that's uh, been annoying me was uh, when the clubs put out these pro- promo videos at the start of the. Season. Like they're, they're brilliant promo videos, you know, fair play, pat on the back, but too many clubs are looking for like a pat on the back but they've made a promo video. It's like, it's your club, you should be promoting your club, you should be doing it week in, week out. Why, why do you think they're looking for a pat on the back? What gives you that impression? Because I've had some of them approach me and be like, oh, you know, oh, look at this for real. And I'm just like, well, you well, know. Well, they're probably looking for a bit of exposure. I'm down, down for a pat on the back. What, why would you why would they look for a pat on the back? They, they know you, you've got a good few followers. They're probably thinking, got, okay, you're going to promote the league. But they've got, they've got more. 
That's my point. It's like, they should yeah, be doing. They should, never enough. They should be doing. Yeah, well, I did. I, I retweeted anyway. But my point being is, they should be doing it every week, not just. Oh look, we made a promo. You can't make a promo video every single week. But you can do. But you can still promote your club every week. Is what well, clubs are, and I'm actively involved in it now as well. We do promote it. We're going to the square. We're going to. We're, we're leafleting. We're dropping leaflets in houses. There's, there's new houses all over Tala, and we're hitting those houses. Because well, you know what you should do. You should video yourself going around and doing some. And shows. send it here when you retweet it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, would you be open to, as part of maybe a season ticket? So say there's someone living in Australia, right, and they wanted to watch Rovers games, right? Yeah. And they paid a package of say forty quid, or how much is the season ticket for Rovers? Two hundred and ten. That includes kids, three kids. So oh. one out of the three kids, two hundred and ten for a season. Okay. But say you say there was a, a season ticket for people living abroad, say hundred quid. They get and they get every home game, uh, stream something like that. What would this the the struggle for streams on our chats and, and forums last night was insane. People are hitting the roof. We've a lot of overseas hoops. That there's no access for them whatsoever. Yeah. And we used to provide it with SRFC TV, and they used to love it. But like I said, it just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, but I, I think that could be is that problems. Is, how how what's the next step of getting involved with that? I mean, do the fact that RT have cut it in half now as well? Are they even interested anymore? Should we just say okay? Can we negotiate some sort of deal where they don't even bother with us? Just, just completely cut toys with them and mm. then create something new, a new entity, yeah. or a new board, or body like that, that we can say, okay, here's what we're going to do now. But do we, we don't have the platform to actually put it. Do, do we care about national TV? Like, like I can't see him saying it again. I agree with the guy again about taking the the TV oh, camera, the t- <laughs> <laughs> taking the TV cameras out of the ground. Why not? Let's just do it ourselves. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like you, you can, you can have. Each club, you know, you pay this amount of money. That way, the club are still getting money in, and they're still getting people are still able to yeah, watch the games. You, know, you know, know what I mean? I clubs just need to wrestle back the control of the footage because I mean, in this day and age, as I'm saying with social media, there's money to be made. You yeah. know, if every if every club has a busy YouTube channel and goals going up straight Sponsor away, shipping. you know, yeah. there's revenue in that for the clubs themselves. Yes. You know, for, views, for views, for views alone, you could get sponsorship. Yeah. And, and you don't need RT footage; you can use your yeah. own. Why should OT be making money off of that they don't care about? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. And I'd pay, like, if that was a subscription service, I'd pay it because sometimes you're away. Sometimes you can't find the link if you're, maybe you might be away or with your missus or whatever, you're on holidays and you want to watch the game yeah. and it's not possible. I'd, I'd 100% pay that. Yeah. But even for the two or three games a year, definitely. Yeah, and it's, not, it's like 100 quid is just a rough estimate. It could be more, it could be less. You know, that's up to the club yeah, to decide yeah. what's, what's in their benefit of that. But it might be it's, it's something to, to look at for the future anyway. Everyone's on their phone these days. It's what it's all about. You can just click on YouTube channel. I remember, like, watching Everton in pre-season. They have their, uh, on their YouTube channel, they have the games on the YouTube channel that you can watch. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. the clubs, it's possible to do it. You know, it's just about finding a way of doing it. But uh, just we'll fly through the rest of uh, Friday's games, and then we'll get on to the, to the big yeah. game from last night. Much as you don't want to. Um, but Dundalk won, uh, Finn Harps won, uh, up in Valley Buffet. You know, Dundalk, very slow starting off, but yeah, kind of starting to get into a bit of a rhythm now, I suppose. They got the equaliser through Garton mm-hmm. uh, late on, I think it was in around the kind of 80th minute. But um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on Dundalk so far? Well, I don't think that the slow start is, is any major surprise. I mean, they've had a lot of changes, mm. um, obviously. from. Well, more so just from management. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I wouldn't say uh, if if it was lucky enough to be supporting a team that was seriously challenging them, I wouldn't be getting over excited because I think they'll they'll, they'll just hit their stride at some stage, you know. So uh, they had a slow start last season. I, to be honest, I, I I I was predicting. I genuinely thought they were going to battle UCD. I thought UCD were gonna um we're, we're, we're gonna really take a hit for the for their slow yeah. start. So um, but um. No, I always to say if I was a Dundalk fan, I wouldn't be overly worried. I think they'd be they'd, they'd be fine. I still think they'll win the league at the counter. Yeah, that's it. Fair. Um. Well, we were only speaking about on Tales of the East End about uh, Dundalk starting eleven is still extremely strong, and they they haven't really lost. I mean, they've shown they've shown more. He's a serious one. Yeah. And oh, he got off the mark in the first game. Oh, he didn't predict predict this start to them at all. I thought they would have started strong, but it's it, it is it, like we said, it's a long season. But I I think they will. They, Eventually hit a bit of uh, hit a bit of form, but a purple patch. Yeah, it's 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 hard to believe. I think we back the minus two against UCD. You know, it's yeah. an absolute disaster. But um, I think I, th- I think it will destroy the magic. 
Yeah, and and uh, Kieran. Yeah, like well, in fairness, in the Finn Harps game, like like Finn Harps did score completely against one play. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I suppose. Hannah from the, Yeah, the Mark had more than enough chances to actually win the game. Do you know what I mean? But I don't. I would. I wouldn't be overly worried if you know if your team's creating a lot of chances. I wouldn't really worry about that. It's when you're struggling to create chances and, and struggling to score and like. Um, for instance, Cork, like they just they, they're barely praying any chances, do you know what I mean? So it's that's when you start to worry, like you know what I mean? But I'm sure they'll start getting into routine now, scoring and winning games like, very, very quickly, like you know. Um, they could have easily won the Finn Ash game four, four, one, five, one, do you know what I mean? I think to Finn Ash credit though, I mean, they, they've yeah. drawn paths as well. I mean, they get good results against teams, yeah. you know, that you'd expect to go and hammer them, you know? Yeah, yeah. They have to put in a lot of effort and a lot of organisation just to grab these draws, you know what I mean? I think later on as the season progresses and the games are going to come more congested and fatigue sets to and I think that's when they're going to really struggle, I think. Yeah, and then um, you're, you're quite happy to see Mikey Jones uh, celebrate. And Mikey Jones was a good lad for us. I mean, he, he, he got a brace against Dundalk when they were really flying and we thought he'd be the gem here. But then he went and like he had his problems and all, but we were totally supportive of the guy and we, we probably wanted to take him back eventually. But um, I just I just think something like that, he was getting stick all game off the fans, there's a banner about him being being a money grabber and he scores in the 90 minute and he celebrates, doesn't add a BR all the way down the side. I just tell him, <laughs> just have to take that. Well, yeah. I think that's great though, that's I think that's what you want, you know. Even Gary Craig, you know, but that's what you want, I mean, you know. Well, if you're supporting the things, what you want. Well, no, it, it, it doesn't make any difference. I think it's great. You know what I mean? You look at yeah. him well up and you look at your players winding them up and so on. So let, leave him to it. Let him at it. <laughs> but, uh, I'd love to know about that technicality, though. That seems to be a bit of a grey area. What, why he was able to get out of his contract or whatever happened or if he had a contract. So. There's ways and means, isn't there? Mm-hmm. There's always ways and means. If you want something, you can, you, you can pretty much get it. Uh, yeah. Um, moving on then, just lastly, from Friday's games, uh, walk for two Cork. Yeah. Bastion here for me, I don't know if you watched Sarkis Bunny, but you just look like you ran the show. Was he excellent, yeah? Yeah. So you uh, can't say much now. See, it's hard to kind of judge as well, because like, we don't need how many seconds are we watching of the game? Yeah, two, three minutes? But also, I'm, I don't know if you guys are a member on Facebook, but the water, there's a Waterford group, Waterford FC Blue Support right. Group, and they were all raving about him, and there was polls of him as man of the match, and he just talked about country money. Ah, well, he was my, I mean, I, I, was, I would have loved to see him in the hoops, but we, we recruited well in the off season and I mean, we did a couple of polls for the podcast, and he was in and around the top guy, the top transfer target that people did want to bring in. Like he's got that little bit of extra quality, hasn't he? Yeah. But um, yeah, no, he's starting the season well. Yeah, he got a nice goal, and then he's he, he's set up then for El Zubedi. I think that's how you say it. I'm not I'm not good at pronouncing it. Anyway. Not you than me, so no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, it's just it's a, it's it is a case kind of going around the league because obviously you look at you know Derry. Ended up going and beating Waterford three two after losing to Rovers. I mean, you yeah. used bit Waterford as well. I mean, yeah. were you down with that game? I think no, I wasn't. I had, I had a I had the doctor's confirmation, so okay. I couldn't convince them that Waterford was gorgeous in mid February. Well, that's why I'm not even streaming service. See? Yeah, there you go. I would have paid, paid the money. Yeah, but uh, I mean, for for Derry because we we watched them on, on Friday. Um, I mean that that was a shocking result. Like in a positive way for them because you know, I I couldn't see them scoring three. I know what they did against. Yeah, Sears, no, so we got a run. We went for we went for a walk for win, and um, like I just didn't see like like I said, it's only one game. I mean, they could have had an off night against us, which I think they did. They set up they set up to kind of defend, and at home it's a different story altogether. I mean, they could just go out and start attacking, but there was, there was two own goals as well, so we don't know how how lucky they were. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try and get a hold of highlights, but um. You just don't know how teams set up differently at home. They set up away. It's it's totally different. Yeah. Different ball game. All, the game of ball all together. No, this yeah, is it's going to be difficult to beat at home anyway. They, I mean, they always are traditionally new, but Brandy was always the place to go. I think the find is a great point by Paul. I like him. I like him around the league. You know, so it's good to see him back. Yeah. The, the, for me, it's just Waterford. You think they're always going to kick on, and then they just kind of hold back a little bit. Yeah. Um, they'll probably go now and hammer the next thing. But from last night's game, uh, the, the big mom you now used to or was supposed to be enemies on Twitter, so talk to the game and whoever wants to take the lead. The game was over after 30 minutes, let's be honest. I mean, it, was it a red? No, it wasn't red. Never a red. I mean, 
he was giving a yellow until the, the linesman pulled up and, and said it was a red. But even the likes of I think Dan McDonald said it was, it was a harsh one and he would have gave a yellow. It was a yellow for him. He said he was going to look at it again. But, I mean, effectively the game was over at, after 30 minutes. I mean, we still tried to play. If you look at the second half, we had eight corners. Possession was pretty much the same. Five shots on goal each in the second half. We did take it to him, I thought. And, um, I mean, they got a bit of luck. It was, I think it was a penalty. I think he was sold. Ward sold Finn and... That was it, you know? Yeah. I think when, when any team in a derby goes down to 10, you, you need to get more worried than, you know, because I, I'm not a fan of green anyway. I think, uh, I don't think it would have been stronger without him. But, um, no, it, it's, you know, it was a bit, I, I actually always sort of fear going, you know, 10 against 11. So, um, but it worked out. I mean, they always held in there anyway. I think they don't enough. They probably could have won it by more. Yeah. To, to no, I don't agree with that at all. I don't think they could have won by more. They, not, they, they, Manus wasn't tested in the slightest. I mean, we had a couple of really good balls in across the box, and we had no striker there to finish this. That was the problem. We were still attacking them. And in the second half alone, if you look at the stats, I think there's only one team really trying to play football. Yeah, it's, inter- it's an interesting shape that he's had when, uh, to start in the first 20 minutes when he's had the ball because uh, Boyle and um, you know, they're almost like they're not even like. Natural wingers. Because they're not even full backs, just push very, very high and you play you know, almost three at the back and almost two at the back. Then two behind the striker. So it's very hard to get the ball off a team that plays like that because the, your retention of possession is, is very, very good and you're almost taking Ward out of the game by doing that. You know what I mean? Um, I thought we could have doubled up on him in fairness when he started the three yeah. to, to, to do damage. But if it was the same again, I mean, I thought we came on the blocks flying. Force 15, 20 minutes, we were great. Yeah. And we normally don't start well in the day, man. Mm. We usually kind of, we're, we're cagey and we, we set up shop a little bit just to kind of get the first 10, 15 minutes over with, yeah. first tackle in. And like I said, they get, well, the game was always, to be honest. The game was real. I thought, I thought from, like, from speaking to Shane Tucker last night, I don't know if I took for you, Greg, right, but it wouldn't be fair to say that you were starting to, like, nearly had the header just before the red card and things yeah. like that. It'd be kind of 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 to come back in the game before that, you know? Um, Oh yeah, no, it did. Yeah, no, I'm shot there. Sorry. I'm shot there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm alright. Yeah, I'm alright. But um, no, it was it's, it's interesting to see. I think obviously when you went down to ten men, you could see that you just played with um four one four until the half time, and then you just changed. That's what I noticed as well. I mean, we had Jack Board, and we just sat him in front of the four midfielders, and it was it was like right, we'll get through this, and then we'll see what we'll we'll, we'll yeah, regroup at half time. Has our type of role? Yeah, we'll just see what happens. But Jack was given the hook and. In, in the words of Brian Kerr, he was giving the hook. Yeah, uh, he was getting time. very pissed off. And yeah, he, he, he's no striker ahead of him. He's playing the yeah, tempo, yeah. he's no striker ahead of him. So, like I said, I can say it anymore again. And Carr came on then in the second half and he put himself about, but there was He's touching his straws, wasn't he? Yeah, there's yeah. only so much you can do, you know, and I mean, especially when you're just chasing shadows for, for 45 minutes. Yeah. You're told to go on and, and do what you can. You know, damage limitation. I thought Bowles uh, defensively were, were solid enough though. Yeah, I, thought, I mean, yeah, they, they dealt with us. They dealt with yeah. us, put it that way, you know. I mean, we had a couple of I mean, our main threats was having a man going up at the end. Yeah. Um, Free header. And he missed it. Yeah, he, and I think he nearly buried one. There was a mistake in identity before when he buried one into the, the shed end, but for all the thing got it years ago when he went up for a corner. But, um, yeah, because it was just a com- totally disappointing, not, not completely disappointing as we didn't have any fight. Like last year, we rolled over us a couple of times. Yeah. There was no fight. The well, team what was the story when you're saying there you've no centre forward? I mean, you're 25 midfielders and you've no centre forward. Yeah, it, I mean, you have a point, but. Um, I mean, you started last year without a goalkeeper. Yeah. And you're starting this season without a striker. We do, I think. Yeah, we, well, we certainly need one now. I mean, with Green. Green is out for a couple of games now, straight red, it depends on, on the ball and, yeah. and the, the, the appeal. Danny Carr could do a job up top. We've got Orhan Voyage, who was an unknown entity, but. He won a penalty, didn't he? He did, he won a penalty. But, to be honest, he should have been buried that himself. Yeah, uh, no comment. But, well, um, yeah, th- I think we, we, we will have to look into the, the, tra- the, the striker pool and see what we can pull out. I mean, Sean Boyd. Pulling back from Finn Harps, but I, I think this, the squad is, is is very strong this year, and I think it's it's only a minor setback. The squad is very strong. What about the manager? Yeah, I'm more mentioned. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm full support of Steve Man. <coughs> what about yours? Playing the whole peanuts card, saying that you're on a stru- shoestring budget, but secretly he has expe- expectations. Of course, he has expectations. Yeah, but you play on the shoestring budget constantly. Yeah. Constantly play on that. 
Well, I'll tell you why we paid it. I worked for Bowles in 2009, and we were paying out in the region of about 30 or 40 grand a week. And I was, yeah, I, I, I was the commercial manager there, and it was basically my job. I was basically being told, go out and get this week's wages, and ask them, is there any chance we can get paid up front instead of bringing out an invoice? That is literally the way the club was, was working in those days. And we're never going to go back to that. And any Bowles fan will tell you, it's 10 times more fun supporting Bowles now than it was when we were winning doubles and we were spending our fortunes, you know. And there's people in Rovers today and Pats and all the other clubs that are spending money that are turning grey because we've all gone home after the match last night. They have to go to work today and they, they have to find the wages. I don't know what Rovers' wages are, but it, I, I, I would imagine it's, it's... We're not in that position where we have to find the wages. Well, I'm not saying that there's other clubs I'm sure are. You, you know, mentioned those, we, we're not in that position. We don't have to go and find wages. Every club has to go and find Yeah, but we don't have to actively seek it. Well, not you know what I mean? He's got a lot of money as well from Burke deal and... I mean, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not just sitting there in a pot of gold. That's, Obviously, you know, yeah, but we don't know. have to actively campaign and go and find wages the way you made it sound. Well, I mean, that's a, I'm just making a point of... From like the years ago where you wouldn't have drawn... And that's what all the clubs were doing. That's what Shells were doing. That's what Bowles were doing. Uh, and I've seen it firsthand, and people saying, you know, you were saying to me on Twitter, oh, geez, but you, you, you're happy to settle with midfield and you're mid, mid table and you, you have no ambition and all that. We don't care. We're, we're looking, we're building slowly. We're bringing in some great young players. Um, great to watch. Crowds are coming out. Things will happen. We'll eventually start getting a few quid. You know, and if, if the gates that we're getting keep up, we will have money to pay players properly. Yeah, but the model that we're going on now with the Rollstone is it's it's a long term plan. It's a long ten to twenty year plan, and it's bearing fruit already. But that's not what it's all about at the moment. We just want to have a good like. You know, there's no one else really in the league that has a set up like Rollstone at the moment as regards to the Rollstone. Yeah. Well, you seem to have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it at all. I, 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 I... We had this the debate on Twitter. Yeah. Like if you go to a 15s game now for balls, right? Yeah. When they're in the huddle, they're going to scream, come on, Kevin's. It doesn't make any sense. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's you're piggybacking one. off of Kevin's. I, I and any other Bowles fan were... You said you, you produce the best players in Ireland. That's what you said. You said Bowles are producing the best young players in Ireland, which is scandalous to say. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing to say. You have a good 17s and 19s setup, but you can't just say that Bowles are actively producing the best young players in Ireland. It's, well, I, I think it's it's just, our starting it's, 11 yesterday suggested we are because they're actually playing there's no point in producing these players and selling them off and getting rid of them can you just we're actually what do you mean with producing them when you say that producing them well they're coming have you have you molded them from like a, a young enough age to say okay these are from from our academy these are we've we've actively groomed these guys to go into our force team yeah well you're talking about you can't just take them home from me and say yeah we groomed him he's so we you're talking him. about long-term projects but i mean Bose's connection with kevin's is only a couple of years old we won the 19s uh, double last year and there was no Kevin's player. Yeah, true, true. So, you know, it's you're talking about long term plans. I've never listen, I'm very skeptical as well about link ups with clubs. I've been to following the league for forty years. I've seen some disasters over the years. And, but uh, there's something really, really positive about this Kevin's link up with Bowes that I haven't seen before. The players coming back Mandrew coming back from Brighton, he was away in England for years, but he was a Kevin's player. So automatically Kevin's uh, presume somebody in Kevin's that you know, knew him, had a word in his ear, listen, Bowles is the, t the club for you, because he's, he's a decent player, I'm sure there's a lot of clubs who would have been interested in him. So it's not just bringing in the players, it's the whole connection with Kevin's. So I think we five or six of our first teamers came through Kevin's. Now it doesn't really bother me. I, and when I, you say came through Kevin's, did they, where, well, where were they before, well, where were they after Kevin's and then they came well, back? A lot of them went to England and so on, but there is a connection there, you know, and it's a healthy connection. I, I genuinely don't see any negatives in it. So yet. everybody on both sides is completely 100% happy with this? I have no doubt about it. I mean, if you look at Bowles, Kevin's, I've never seen a, a club there. They're always the first on Twitter with congratulations. They, they, all, their, all their kids are at the matches every, every week. So there's a real genuine bond there. Is there a financial gain for Kevin's to be involved? Well, obviously there is if we sell players. I mean, that's, I'm sure that it's not a one-sided deal, you mm. know. But obviously if we move on their players, and we're putting their players in the shop window, so, you know, I think, I think one of the biggest point. issues was, was with Good Kevin. So, when I was coaching with his shells in the 13s and things like that, yeah. we were converting our league's DDSL into and uh, League of Ireland. Was it, Kevin's wanted to do everything in their power to be part of the league, like, but we were like, yeah. What is the benefit? Where are the players progressing from you to after Kevin's after 115 17s league? 
and they were like, oh, it's going to destroy our club and things like that. So they need a League of Ireland Cup to be attached because yeah. we wanted that, we, all the clubs voted that they couldn't be part of the league because there's no benefit for Irish football. Like, you know what I mean? Because once under 18's league is over, where do they go? Mm-hmm. So I suppose it's a benefit to them that they're with you. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it would be, I think the League of Ireland would prefer if it was used on your own identity and, you know, but mm-hmm. I can see from both sides why. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you just did yeah. link up together. But um No, well look sorry, just going back to Gary's and talking about Rolston, I don't have a problem with Rolston. Yeah. I just think it's a massive gamble. It's a it cost a huge amount of money. You basically have to sell back your club to pay for Rolston, right? No, we will that's when you say that, elaborate on that, what do you mean sell half our club? Well, Who do we sell it to? The Wilson family. Did yeah. they take fifty? They're Robert's fans. Yeah, but they're But they're what? They have their money, they have money in it. If they if they if that family Decide in the morning. I don't know who's putting in the money now or their family situation, but whoever's putting in the money decides in a few years down the line that they want the money back and they want to pull out. You know, you are still a that's all still speculation, though. Well, I mean that's natural enough, but I mean you're not a you're not a fully owned members club anymore, so you've always got that danger when somebody has fifty percent. We are a fully owned members club. Ray Wilson is a fan. He's a, a member. Fan. He's a fan though. And a member, and when then the rest of the fans own the club. Well, I think, anyway, uh, from a Roma's perspective, they're doing great work then, obviously, with Duffer. How much will a, a loss with Duffer be, in your own opinion? Much. No? No, not really. I mean, we had a good year with us, and then he's gone on to the pastures now, so, I mean, we've got fantastic on the 15s. Set yeah, up I mean, now. the players you're producing are, are fantastic. And but it's early days in regards to that. I mean, like I said, it's a long-term project, and uh, we, we, we have a really good thing going there at the moment, and, I mean, it's it's it's... We're leading the way as regards to producing players. I think so. Anyway, and we will do for the next five to ten years if we keep keep on going. Yeah, just keep producing the way you have been. I mean, you look at. I don't. Um, and Gavin, Gavin been with, you know, has been with us since he's eleven. So I mean, that is a product of an academy. That's a, that's the yeah. point that I was trying to make. The Greg is that that's that's we produced him. He's come through the ranks, he's gone up, he's starting the first hand. Fairness, he was a freaking agent, though. There won't be too many in the ground, you know. He's something else, I tell you what, he can play at the top, he's a, he's a some footballer, he's, yeah. he really is good, the ball at speed. But that's that's a product of our academy. That's what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across is that you can't just say, okay, well, we're producing the best players. So, do you consider Aaron Ballger a product of your academy? No, because he was uh, with Kevin's yeah. up until maybe 16, 17, so he wouldn't yeah. be the product. So, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying with that? Like, that's what I wanted to ask. This is the Kevin's Bowles thing, in my opinion, it's just a marriage of convenience for them to get into the National League. And I mean, Bowles can just take the property of best players. That's all it is, personally. That's And they, they might admit to that. I, I, I wouldn't even have a problem with that. If, it, if, it's, a, if it's a marriage of convenience, but my problem problem is that you we don't have a million quid to spend on a plastic pitch in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? So. No, they're saying you have no problem with Rolston, but they're showing in these little digs saying it's a plastic pitch in the middle of nowhere. Have you been there? It's a fantastic setup. No, 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 Absolutely yeah. amazing setup. And there's plenty of grass pitches as well. I think we should there's, a there. fo- there's a football yeah. building and there's the whole lot. I mean, yeah. they're showing little digs saying that it's a plastic pitch. I mean, you kill for that. Are you trying on a plastic pitch in DYT, don't you? Mm, good point, yeah. But yeah. you want your rent, it didn't cost us a million quid and a half our club. It didn't cost us half our club. Well, you uh, seem to be very privy to the, to the financial <laughs> aspect of Shamrock Rovers. Listen, I've, I've been around the league, I've been going to the league since 1979, and I've actually a lot of good friends around us. Martin Keaton, John Bourne, all that. I was involved with them in um, National League United back in the day when we were trying to keep Wimbledon out of Dublin. Um, so a lot of. Uh, so I, I'd be a Southside Bowls fan as well, which so I, I've been trolling Rowers fans since my school days down yeah, the road really, yeah. Very much so. so um, but professional Rowers troll. But like I said beforehand, my problem with you saying that you were producing players is not the case because Kevin's are doing I think you just play my words there. You Kevin's know? are doing I don't, I, in, in fairness, I don't really follow, for me sins, I don't follow junior football that much. So I mean, I just look at these players turning up 19 years of age in the Bowls first team and I say to people, where he come from? Well, he was with Kevin's. So I mean, that's, you know, it's... Yeah, it was with Kevin's, not with the Bowls, yeah. you'd say. Yeah. Alright lads, well we can be we can back and forth, back and forth yeah. for this for yeah. So let us know what you think in the comments in regards to the lads who's right or wrong on that. But we're just going to run through the rest of the games uh, to finish up. Uh, so Pat's through the middle of Finn Harps. Um, mm. Again, we spoke about Finn Harps, and the, I think it's, it must be down to their organisation. They, they seem to be hard to beat. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, um, see what they, to see what they set up shop, don't they? Yeah. Um, a real good post online. Like I said, we don't really see much of the highlights for other teams. Well, we definitely didn't see the last one. But they me? said that um, they would struggle to score. They kind of rely on set pieces and they set up well as regards defensively. So they're probably a different thing we're going to see this year. Yeah. We kind of rolled over them a couple of times. But it's good to have Oli back in them. Yeah. You some, uh, I, still, I still think they'll struggle though. I, I, you know, I, I think I can't see anyone other than UCD and Arabs. Yeah, well, we've kind of onto onto UCD who who always seem to you know play lovely football and a player who I really like scored last night for Lugia. Yeah. We spoke about him off air and I was a fan playing for the other twenty one. Stephen Kenny seems to be a big fan of his as well. He actually singled them out on his um on his first press conference. The one compliment that we'll get to Stephen Kenny is regards to the, the under twenty one squad. You, you got to bang on. I don't think there was many more he could have had or take, taken away from his own home base squad. Uh, he he got he, he got a nail on the head so. Ferugia is a. I think he, did he get a goal? He got a score. He scored a goal against the Amateurs. Yeah. Against Dundalk. Yeah. No, Brandon Cavanagh scored. He scored against Dundalk, did he? No, yeah, Ferugia scored last night against Dundalk. Ferugia, yeah. So. Cavanagh yeah. scored for Ireland, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was, yeah. But he played in that game, he was supposed to be excellent, so. Um, it's like he would have got a move, to be fair. Yeah. But I think, you know, if he keeps seeing what he's doing, he probably will come, you know, the mid season break or something when the transfer window opens again. Um, but in uh, regards to Hoobins now off the mark for Dundalk, Duffy's now off the mark for Dundalk. Um, I think I see them now kind of pushing on. They were just waiting to get that win, and obviously we were all kind of waiting for when Hoobin was going to get off the mark as well. It could snowball now, couldn't it? Yeah. Well, <coughs> I personally don't mind as a, as, as a neutral of the Premier Division. You know, I, I just like to see good players playing well, so I'm happy enough to see that. But for you guys, this must be kind of quite fearful, especially if you're playing against. Then, yeah, I, I, but who's playing this Friday? 20 goal strikers yeah. are, are the goal dust, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, one, and if you look at Dundalk's turnover of goal scorers since Kenny took over the reins, I mean, they had McMillan, they tell, they hooven, they hooven again. Mm-hmm. They just seem to be able to have this constant stream of goal yeah. scorers, which is goal dust in football. Yeah. It's goal dust. Yeah. I'm probably missing one of those. So, I mean, McMillan was there. It's, it's but they had, they had, they had Marie and, and, um, and George Kelly, but they never really, because the was so good that. They never really gonna look in. And Kenny's still kinda of on the bench coming on making the odd appearance. But you don't underestimate the, the departure of Stephen Kenny. I mean they are in transition as regards to management because I mean he might want he might have a couple of little changes that he wasn't happy with Stephen Kenny doing and he might have in, implement his new strategies or whatever he wants to do. So they, they could be in transition, you know? Yeah. That that's that's the way I see that the league is really up for grabs this year. Yeah. It really is. And yourself? Oh, you, um, judging by that look, you don't agree? I don't agree, but I was going to be in it. Philip Graham Seaman, that's there. <laughs> <laughs> look, at the end of the day, Bowers won't be involved. Um, but if you're looking for tests, if, if Rovers are talking about having six, f- four ding downs with, with, with Dundalk, and last night was the best they've got at the moment, there's nothing there. Well, last night well, was a right off, I think, though. I think, I think, though, if you, if you take away maybe the red card, and I would like to see that again just to see was it a red? Because from where I was sitting from, uh, looking at it, I didn't think it was a red card. I don't know about you. I don't know how good your eyesight is. <laughs> I had my glasses on, anyway. But no, I don't know. I think a lot of people weren't sure, didn't really see it fully, like, properly. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was a weird one, it, it, to be honest. All you can do is go off people who are close to it or um, uh, news feeds and things and like listen, that. It was, the, it was the bench and the you know. players' reaction as well. I mean, that's just, it's it's what happens. Players react like this. Any sort of tackle that goes in, players are going to jump up and try and get the players. But that's the way it is. Yeah. And from what we heard, War said, yeah, we rolled around and uh, that's it. Didn't think it was a red. No, um, just uh, in regards to the last game. I mean, he said that he actually came out with those press release, wasn't it? War said he... I haven't seen it. Yeah, there was a press release today or last night, late last night, and he's pretty much said, yeah, it, it, he, he exaggerated. Made, made a, yeah, exaggerated, made a meal out of it. Mm. But that's football. Like you yeah. said, that is football. But yeah, I suppose it's, he's there to make sure his team get every advantage as possible. Every door he's the ball, yeah. man, it's a derby, that's what yeah. happens. Yeah, you know, and, and everyone plays the car whether you want to admit it or not, let's be honest. Um, yeah, listen, if it was us, <laughs> and one of our players did it would be lovely, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. So if the shoes on the other fit or the cat fit to wear it type of thing, you know. Uh, but then Sligo and Cork, uh two one to Cork and Cork mm-hmm. finally get a result. I mean, I was at two two of their games already this year, it was the President's Cup and they weren't great in the first half against Dundalk, but they were actually quite good in the second half. I really liked Darrell O'Connor. Uh something you see. Um to be fair, 
and he came on and he, he, he gave them the run around in the second half and then they got the goal to uh, O'Connor a free kick which is a lovely free kick as well and he seems to be playing as a centre mid for them uh, because they've signed him full backs now uh, but that was the case last year as well they kept three or four for bright balls they did mm. they well, they they then they did um, what's the other guy he was playing with one of the Horgans yeah his brother yeah. Uh, the other brother from the Horgan clan not the one that you like <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah and, Again, I, I believe Daryl O'Connor was brilliant again um, last week. And I guess Patsy was brilliant as well. Yeah. So I haven't seen Cork, so I don't know. I don't know what's going uh, he, on. He, he's very good. And then I think Dan Casey's a very good signing. You'd, you'd know a lot. From I, I don't think he's getting the game. Wasn't he dropped last week? Well, I think he was. Yeah, the games I was at, he played. And I thought he played very well. Yeah, I think he came on on Friday in the second half or something. But, um, that, that'll be an interesting one to see because Dublin players generally. They don't always settle down there, so I'm kind of watching yeah. that. Yeah, well, Steve Lee, he was put, uh, seemed to take. Shed is doing well, is it? Yeah. He settled well yeah. down there. So, so, so it might be the case where they're kind of opening up to a lot of people. Sean McLaughlin's a very good player, got off, he got scored last night. Yeah. And they'll be there there. There were there issues with scoring goals, and the manager even admitted there. I think they're still the issue as well. Yeah. I think they're very direct. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's kind of dinosaur football, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a day for me anyway. We yeah. just, whenever we play home, it's a national team. Yeah, 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 it's a physical affair. Yeah. And I just know this is, it's going to be a battle. Right. Yeah. Not, not like a derby, but similar, you know, where it's just, you have to kind of have that little bit of an edge. Yeah. And it's, I think just, I, I, I'm raising them to go top four, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I think they'd be. From, I, think, I think second. Second is it would be an achievement for them. I think but, uh, anything. I, I don't think they'll get out of anything other than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, third or fourth, as you said, I think that that's a realistic expectation. But two of our followers getting the goals there, called Callum McFadden and Rob Morris with the winner. So well done to those boys getting off the mark. But uh, that's been our final word show. Of plenty of entertainment. A huge thanks to the lads for coming on. Check out Killian or uh, Greg's uh, YouTube channel, uh, Killian M Two. There'll be. You'll have our names and our um, titles underneath. Don't forget to check out Tales of the East End podcast. Where can you find it? You can find it on East End Ball on Twitter, uh, Roddy Parsons on Facebook, and Tales from the East End on Instagram. And you get on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and any good podcast platform. There you go. And I'm the only one allowed not listen to it. He's Paul's man. He's the Robert podcast. He's blacklisted. Huge thanks to Kieran. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 5k. Or about 360 away now or something like that. Uh, probably be less by the time you're watching this. But uh, if you like this video, drop a like in the video. Tell us what you think uh, in the comments. Would you like to see the lads back on the show? I know, I certainly would. So let us know your thoughts yeah, in the comments. And we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.